Okay, on this uh, video, I have this new lock system on top. This piece here. There's one on the other side. It's it's not on now, but I got to put it on. But what happens here is, this is from before. I showed you this lock mechanism that locks the top and that floats. And then I added this on here. Now I added that because when I made this fixture, I 3D printed the fixture to put in these little half moon things. Well, it's actually a full circle, but only half of it goes in the part. And I tried that fixture out, and it works pretty good. But there's still um, some vibration there. And I made it thicker than the other one, and I put four tabs on it instead of two. And it still vibrated. So I'm thinking that's what's going on over here. Is even though I have this these plates on here, it has to go through this plastic material, and then it, it just it you know there's nothing there's no substructure in here. It just bolts onto this plastic and it might be vibrating or letting it vibrate a little bit because this plastic is, you know, it's honeycomb. So I added this locking system on top. So this piece locks against this Delrin piece. And then this disc is attached to this top piece and this piece here which is attached to that Delrin piece. So there's no plastic in there. So it's, there should be no, no vibration because it's not going through any of the honeycomb. So this disc is able to float, and it floats on these pins. There's uh, four of these pins. And I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the setup on the other side, which is the same as the one you just saw, except I don't have the cylinder on it. And these are the pins. Then this disc is mounted to these pins. And they float back and forth. They won't float forward and backwards, but they'll float in and out. This is a piece I added on the back. And this piece was there. I just drilled and tapped. Those are quarter 20. Those are um, set screws. And I turned the diameter down 187 on this side. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't. Really have a tripod. I'm going to hook the air up to it.
So what happens here is actually this piece is the piece that moves and this is stationary. But I have this piece just sitting on a couple of blocks and this is free. But what happens is that when this piece rotates, it's like that. I can't go through the whole arc because I'm hitting the table. But it, um, there's these pieces in here, and I'll show you them in a minute. So I'm going to uh, lift this up and apply the air. See, now the whole thing wants to tip because this piece is locked to this piece. So I can hold this, and this piece will hold itself because it's, it's breaking on this disc. And I can release that, and it's free to move. There it's locked again. And it's free now. And I apply that little switch. So I'm applying that and it locks it. Then when that's released, it allows it to move. Then when it's locked, it's locked against it. So let me show you, show you this part. I got the other one on the bench. So this is the part. And the piece, this is the piece on the front. And what this does is this, uh, there's a piston that goes in there, which is this one. Then this piece hits against that. And it pushes out. That's what, when this is activated, it pushes that out. And this is, like I said, this is a part to, to give it more surface area. Instead of being this round little piece, now it extends out that far. So there's just a couple guide pins in there, a couple dowel pins, and that just pushes that back onto the disc. So what what pushes this backwards is actually there's a set of springs inside of here. Now, I'd, at first I thought about putting a spring on the underside to pull it back because you got to have a way of pulling it back because the, the pressure of the O-ring with, with no pressure in the cylinder at all will will make it stick any to any at any position and i didn't want this rubbing on the disc i needed to release it so i needed some way to push this back so i thought about putting a spring on the bottom and pulling it back but i tried that before and it didn't really work that well because it it kind of it's not true. It, it kind of binds it a little bit. So then I thought about putting a couple of springs on the side by putting a pin through here and putting a couple springs on the side, and, and that would have worked. But I was thinking, well, maybe I could do something else. So that's what I did. 
I ended up making this was a test piece this is the real one so what I did let me take these off so I can show you These are uh, countersunk screws. I needed to keep this area flat. So these are pieces I made. They're like little little stands. They mount to the cylinder. And there's two in the front. Then there's two in the back. Now on the back of the cylinder, I didn't put any O-rings in there because I uh, I got this uh, piece I made, this Delrin piece. And it has the uh, NPT fitting in there, and it acts as a a seal. So when this is bolted down, and then this piece is bolted down to it, it captures this surface against this surface and seals it. Because I didn't have any room to put anything inside, so I had to use... I had to make something to come out. But what I did here was I put four little countersink, well, they're not countersink, counterbore. They're four slots. I don't know exactly what you would call it. They're circles that go down almost seven eighths. And what happens here is that this piston, these are 30 degrees apart, 60 between each one, 30 from the center. So I set up the indexer and I drill these four for dowel pins, just like this, except I put these in, I can't get them out. They go in there, then I got these little springs that go in there, then they hit against these pieces here. So when this piece moves forward, it pushes against that spring and it pushes it back down. So I looked at those springs, I looked at different size springs. This is a bigger spring. This won't work. It's too big. But that little spring that just went on the floor is the same size as what they use in a, a pen. So I looked at the McMaster car and they're like a dollar each. And I said, well, you know, dollar each. So I went over to the uh, dollar and a quarter store and I bought a pack of pens. So I just take the spring out of them. And I use that. Now I put four slots in here thinking I might need four, but I ended up only using three of them because three was... Three was plenty, but if I needed more pressure, I could put a fourth one in there. So that's how that works, is that the spring is in there, and then when this piston is activated, it pushes against the spring to push this, push this back, and 
these pieces here capture that spring underneath here and that's what holds it in place and these pieces here I needed them mounted to a plate So I know what I, I I knew what I needed, but I didn't know how to achieve it, and I really didn't want to make it out of a solid piece. And I could have had it welded, but then I found this channel, so I made it out of this channel. This is the I clamped it in a vise. It was like that. Then I walked around it with an end mill. Well, first I thinned it out. Then I walked around it with an end mill. And that's how I came up with that part. I needed this thickness here and the height and the thickness here. So I made two on one side, one here and one on the other side. Then I made two over here, two for the front and two for the back, all of one piece of material here. Now the one in the back is the ID is a lot smaller to capture this part to keep it from blowing out. Well, actually, it goes this way. So that worked out pretty good. Then, like I said, I have this disc in the front, which gives it more surface area. And then it gets mounted to this plate. So this is the back, this is the front, so it's something like that. And then this, this piece here moves to press against that disc. Now I would have preferred that this piece move backwards and this piece move forward, but then I would have had to slot these and do a lot of other stuff and already I got a extra set of holes in here from where I mismeasured it but anyway we got it fixed got it working so there's no piece no no use in making another part because we're able to salvage this and make it work So that's, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It's different. Now the only thing I had to do here was in order to get this piece in here, well the new piece, because this is a one inch bore. And if I put that O-ring on there and I tried to pass it through these slots, it would just rip that, rip that O-ring to shreds. So what I ended up doing was I ended up boring this bigger. I think it was uh, 25 or 30 thousandths bigger. And then I put a 45 degree chamfer on the inside where the two bores meet. So when I press that O-ring in there, it compresses and goes into that one inch bore. So this piece being bigger, that's why I had to add this piece on the front because it's bigger too to make up for the bigger diameter here on the end see that's that's a nice snug fit there see it won't go in the back because it's too big but the one inch size will go in the back so 
So I tried to turn a little uh, pilot on that aluminum piece and I tried to bore this plastic. I was trying to get it to press fit on there, but it didn't really, because I didn't want this piston moving back and forth and then this piece lagging behind or somehow separating from this piece. So I ended up drilling a 1 8 dowel pin hole through there. So I pinned this plax, uh, black Delrin piece to the aluminum piece to keep it together so they wouldn't separate. Now I put the, I didn't have to drill the hole all the way through, but you really have to because for some reason, if you wanted to take this pin out, you have to have an access hole to drive that pin out if for some reason I wanted to change it. Because at first I thought about making this piece, one piece, out of the Delrin. But that would have been really hard to make. So it's a lot easier to make it two pieces. And that's what I did. Made that two pieces. Pinned that on there. So now that's one piece and this is another piece. But that's how this, uh, this cylinder works. The springs are inside. And it seems to work really good. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, That's what I'm working on now. Well, it's all finished now. Uh, I got to turn my air back on. That locks up pretty good. Hard to hold the camera and do all this other stuff with one hand. Yeah, it doesn't move much. I mean, I want a little more movement in there. But the way it came out, it's good enough. All right. Bye.